In 2023, viewers from 19 countries sent me 54 emails with photos and videos of book lice and asked me to identify these insects. Of these 54 letters, 26 contained videos with book lice on walls, ceiling, furniture, in beds, in bathtubs, and in rooms of all kinds. And I will now show you all of these videos and some of the photographs and tell you what sources are depicted on them, explain how you can identify these insects in your home yourself, and will briefly tell you how to get rid of them. If you need more detailed instructions on how to eliminate book lice in your home, please write about it in the comments. I check all the comments and if under the video there are a certain number of questions about the fight against these insects, I will make a video on this topic, perhaps even together with the guys from the pest control service. They will be able to tell a lot of specific details of such a fight. And in the meantime, let's see what kinds of book lice live in our houses. This is probably one of the highest quality videos. The insect has a clearly visible pattern of reddish spots on its back. This is most likely a species of the genus Doripteryx. They are not a very harmful pest and most often live in dump areas, in bathrooms and basements. Just don't be fooled by the quality of this video. In reality, it is very difficult to see this pattern on book lice bodies due to their tiny size. Here is a clear example. The same book louse on the white wall was filmed in macro mode. It has well visible details of coloration, antennae and legs, and by all these details it is easy to identify it. But in reality, in an apartment on the wall, you will see it like this. It's very good if you see it at all and can check its coloration. On the white wall it is still somehow noticeable, but on dark floor or on furniture you may not see it. The length of its body about 1 mm and its color is light, parts of its body covers are translucent. Therefore, in order to notice it and examine it so as to be able to identify it, it is desirable to use a magnifying glass or macro mode, as the author of this video did. When you get close to it like this and see the spots on its back, you will recognize the Buklaus Dorypteryx. Not all the videos they sent me are so crisp, of course. There are also these. Here it is almost impossible to recognize an insect from a video, even on a large screen. Not only is it small, but it is also out of focus, and therefore it is not even possible to count its legs, which is the main identification feature. But the good thing is that many viewers sent me both videos and photos, and in this case I figured out the type of the insect exactly from the photo. Nothing is clear here, here too, but here you can see the shape of the body and the large head. This individual is similar to a typical book louse from the genus Lipochelis. Possibly Lipochelis divinatorius. That's why I think such real videos shot on a phone in a common apartment are more valuable than perfect footages from professional photographers. Because here you see insects as you would see them at home. So, book lice at home can be identified by some kind of triad of signs. If your insects have all three of these signs, they are almost certainly book lice. The first of these is the large head. Look here. This book louse was photographed under a microscope and you can see how large its head is relative to its body. This is a distinctive feature of book lice. They need powerful jaws with strong muscles to know their food. Mainly dry plant remains, grains and other organic matter. Only a large head can accommodate such muscles and the jaws must be clearly visible. This viewer, by the way, has two species of bark lice at home. Compare, this is the first. And this is the second. This one is also similar to Lipochelis divinatorius, a common pest of dry grocery products. These Lipochelis, by the way, are often mistaken for termites. Indeed, they are slightly similar. But let's get back to the head. Not everyone has a microscope at home, so most of us see book lice like this. Here you can see hairs, probably dog hairs, and by them you can more or less accurately estimate the size of the insect. But even with this look, it is clear that the head of this insect is about a quarter of the body, which is quite large. And by the way, such dusty, littered surfaces are their typical habitat in an apartment. In such dust they find their food. Some crumbs, pieces of skin, dust particles. 
the less such dusty surfaces you have in your home, the less book lice and the less probability of their appearance there will be. At the same time, different book lice are attracted to different conditions. Pests of groceries products or, for example, those patients that spoil the glue in the bindings of old books are indeed more often found in dry places where such groceries and books are stored. Whereas in the wild they gravitate, on the contrary, to damp surfaces on which such raw food softens from moisture and becomes more palatable. In apartments, most book lice live in humid places and on damp, sometimes even completely wet surfaces. Here, for example, is the book louse on the wall in the bathroom, between the sink and the bathtub. Even if this wall is not wet per se, it is always humid here in the bathroom, drops often deposited on the walls, and book lice here literally enjoy such a comfortable climate for them. Therefore, by the way, sausages often settle and breed in mass in new buildings and in apartments after renovation, where there are a lot of damp surfaces and finishing material that have not yet dried. Here, for instance, is the book louse from an apartment where the owner made renovations and even added one floor a few months ago. And after the renovation, her apartment was filled with book lice. She called the pest control service, the apartment was treated, but they could not completely destroy the insects. And after that, she sent me a video asking me to identify the insects and suggest how to fight them. It's interesting that she moved to a new apartment because the old one also had sausages. She could not get rid of them and was so afraid of insects that it was easier for her to change her place than to get used to such roommates. This is a second important identification sign. Either a newly built house or housing after renovation. If you have insects breeding in mass precisely after the construction of the house or after its renovation, it is very likely to be book lice. And third, book lice jump if you try to touch them with your finger. I recently showed a good video about this, you can watch it as well. But even if these insects do not jump and you do not provoke them to do so, they run in such characteristic jerks. A few steps and a stop, a few steps and a stop again. Anyway, if you see such a tiny bug, try touching it with your finger. If it jumps away, it is almost certainly a book louse. In this video, by the way, is not the most common synanthropic book louse. I showed it in another video. It is most likely Cerobasis gestfalica, known for having very large eyes. Here in the photo that the author sent along with the video. You can see that its eyes are about the size of a dragonfly compared to its head. So, if your insects first massively breed either after the repair or just in the bathroom or toilet, second, at a closer look they have a clearly visible large head relative to the size of their body, and third, they jump when you try to touch them, then it is most likely book lies. There is the fourth sign, but it is not absolute. The most numerous sausages in apartments have a characteristic coloration. In general, their body seems translucent, but if you look closely, you can see a pattern of pinkish spots on their back. Here, for example, from the video, it is impossible to understand what is in front of us. The insect is too small, no structural details are visible. But in the photo that girl sent me along with the video, you can see characteristic spots on the back of the insect's abdomen. And it immediately became clear that this was a book louse, highly likely Doripteryx. Therefore, by the way, if you send me materials for identifying insects, then send both videos and photos. It happens that on video nothing is clear at all, but in the photo I can see insects normally. And sometimes it happens vice versa when an insect can be recognized only by video. But let's return to coloration. Spots on the body are not a very reliable sign since many book lice do not have them. Here, for example, is a dark book louse, which looks like Lepinotus patrealis. It is almost black and no spots are visible on its body. I spoke in detail about this case in another video. Sometimes the light may fall on an insect in such a way that it completely overilluminates its color and makes it white. Here, for example, the book louse seems absolutely white, and only by the shape of the body and the ratio of the sizes of the head and abdomen, you can recognize it as a representative of the Socoptera group. Here is a similar situation. From the shape of the body, it is clear that this is a typical book louse, and only if we look very closely, we can see the pattern of the body, by which we can identify a representative of the family Psilipsocidae, 
possibly of the genus Doripteryx. As you probably already understood, small size is a problem not only for identification, but also for extermination of book lice. First, they can hide literally anywhere, in any crevices and at any depth. Second, they move almost unhindered between rooms, including from neighbors to you or from basements to living spaces. So, even if you manage to eliminate all these insects in your apartment, they can relatively quickly get in again from your neighbors. So, when planning book lice extermination, you need to be prepared for the fact that it will take a long time to completely remove them. What exactly does this removal require? First, find out in which room in the apartment book lice are most abundant. This is usually a bathroom or toilet, sometimes a kitchen. People often write to me saying that these insects are all over the apartment, they find them in all the rooms. This is normal for people who are afraid or dislike insects. For them even two or three book lights on a window in a room can be a real nightmare. But here you need to control yourself and soberly assess the situation. In which rooms there are a lot of insects and in which they come across one by one. As a rule, the place where there are a lot of them is their breeding ground. Or through this room they enter the apartment from neighbors. In these rooms it is necessary to inspect as thoroughly as possible all the places where book lice may be hiding. This may require moving furniture and appliances away to inspect them from all sides and the surfaces to which they were adjacent. If possible, you should unboard and remove baseboards and inspect the gaps behind them. In the bathroom, inspect the space under the bathtub and under the sink. It is usually damp and bark lice can accumulate here. If there are a large concentration of book lice in any of these places, that would be good. Because if they are eradicated here, then with a high probability they will no longer breed here. After this, treat with an insecticidal spray all surfaces on which you found book lice and on which you have encountered them before. This treatment will kill most of the insects. After treatment, do not wash off the aerosol for at least several days, or better yet a couple of weeks. Almost all modern insecticides continue to act and kill insects even after drying. This treatment will destroy the main part of the book lice micropopulation in the apartment, and in some cases it kills all the insects in the house. If after such treatment sources begin to appear again, simply crush them with your fingers, but at the same time pay attention to the places uh, where they appear. Somewhere near these places they can either breed or penetrate into the apartment from neighboring premises. Try to inspect these places as carefully as possible. If there is any crack here, a gap near the pipe that enters from the neighbors or from the basement, then seal it with silicon sealant. If there is just another cluster and breeding place of book lice, then exterminate them in the same way as the previous time. After three to four such iterations or blocking of migration roads, insects will either completely disappear or there will be so few of them left that you will not notice them at all. Or if you do, it will be so rare that they will not bother you. If you are interested in how such insecticide treatment is carried out, write about it in the comments. My extermination colleagues and I will show you this process in detail. And just for your peace of mind. Book lice do not bite people and are generally safe. I know cases where people specially create a kind of open mini terrarium for them in flower pots and watch their life together with children. So yeah, where there are a lot of them, it's better to control them. But if there are just a few of them and they don't spoil any of your products, it's quite possible to get along with them and live together. If you can stop them, lead them. And have fun! If this video was helpful for you, you can buy me a cup of coffee. And even if these 40 videos did not help you identify your insects, you know what to do. Here is my email, you can send me photos and videos and I will try to help you identify your roommates.